A false prophet is not necessarily someone that is not born again or that does not have a calling to preach. A false prophet can be a real child of God called to preach. But he's opening his or her mouth and what he's saying at that time is not the true will of God then. If a prophet should be speaking what God is saying, what did the Bible say? When you go to a prophet, you're going to hear what the Lord is saying. Now, the present continuous word of God. So when you go to someone uh, and what you're meant to say, someone comes to you and what you're meant to say is, God said I should tell you that you should stop lying. And I look at you and I know when I say that you not drop a proper prophet's offering. And I say, hmm, I can see your star is very bright. At that moment, you're a false prophet. You're, that's not what God is saying. What you're saying is not okay. The Bible tells you what they should get from the prophet's mouth. It should be what God is saying then. You should speak the words of God, God's mind then. Why are you telling him something that is either past tense? Do you know the funny thing about even being a false prophet? You can be speaking past tense or far future. And God is saying, tell him today that he should give up breaking bottles when he gets angry. And you go and tell him, God said, Shah, when you get angry, you shouldn't shout. That's not what God said. So your prophecy is false. All right. So the Bible says, Many false prophets have gone out into the world. There are many people that are going to open their mouth and say things God is not saying. Then, even Christians, real Christians, it doesn't mean they work for the devil. It just means that their prophecy is not true. It may be hard for you to understand this, but if you read your Bible through and through, you will find out, second book of Kings, chapter 22, the king's name was Ahab. God wanted to kill him. <laughs> You have to read the story and and fear. God sent a spirit into the mouth of Ahab's prophets. They were not prophets of Baal. They were prophets. And they were prophesying to Ahab. Go, conquer, win the battle. And one prophet out of this other one, there were 400. One prophet, his name was Micaiah, came and said, God said, you will die if you go for this battle. The other 400 prophets were saying, no, go and conquer. And they even told this prophet, they say, say what everybody is saying. Those were examples of false prophets. But this is the thing about that story. And I like to point it out. That those 400 prophets felt an anointing come on them. They had visions. The Bible says, that God showed it to Micaiah what was really happening. That's how two people, three people can say conflicting things. Some of them are not conflicting, they are paradoxical. You know, two people can say different sides. Have you heard about the blind man of Hindustan that went to see an elephant? Have you heard that story before? One came and touched the side of the elephant, they were blind, and said, huh, the elephant is like a wall. Another one touched the tail and said, it's like a snake. Another one touched the leg and said, it's like a tree. Different prophetic people can touch on different aspects, okay? I'm not saying that's contradictory. But I'm saying if one person comes to you and says, God has shown me, hmm, and says something, and another person comes and says the exact opposite, like Ahab, go to this war, you will conquer. Another person comes and says, if you go, you won't come back alive. One person is deceived. We've studied it here, Ezekiel 14, you can read it later. But what actually happens is this. God allowed, the Bible says, a lying spirit to come into the mouth of Ahab's prophet. These guys felt an anointing, they felt something. Mm. They saw a vision, they saw Ahab winning. Ah, and the people were running. And God explained to Micaiah, Micaiah was shown behind the scenes. They took Micaiah behind the curtain to the back room, the rehearsal room. They took him behind and showed him that God said, who is going to go and deceive Ahab? Let him die. And the Bible says, this spirit said this thing and another spirit said another thing. They actually had discussions. Finally, the Bible says, one spirit came out and said, I will go 
and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And God said, go and succeed. This is in your Bible. I've given you the passage. Go and read it later. So, the Bible says it happened in the presence of God. These are things that your small mind will have problems with. Because you're going to be like, wait now, wait now, how, 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 how? Why, why would God do such a thing? Because Ahab wanted people that will say what he wants to hear. If you've read Ezekiel 14, we've studied it here. That the Bible says when you go to a prophet with an idol in your heart, that is a fixed thing you want to hear. God said, I will answer you according to the idol in your heart. Then I'll destroy you and the prophet. That's actually in your Bible. I like to say the first day I saw that thing, I was in a bus, I was in a university, maybe 99 or so. I was on my way to Unical for a conference. I almost fell out of a moving bus. I had never heard such a thing in my life. God said, if anyone deceived the prophet, it is I who deceived him. Have you read before that to the pure I show myself pure? To the crooked. Ah, let me say how someone said it. To the 419, I show myself 4110. Oh, I love that. In fact, I've thrown away all the other renditions. That's now. now. Your 419, God will show you. <laughs> Your 419, I will show you 410. You will know who born first. And that's it. This is, it does not occur once in the Bible, it does not occur twice. So it's not an error in thinking. It occurs very many times in your Bible. Have you heard of Balaam? Let me pray first before I come and curse Israel for you. And God said, don't go. He stood up and told them, I will not come. They said, ah, why now? We said we will give you example. 10 million now. Why did it fall a hand now? 10 million. Even if you offer me the whole bank, I'm not coming. The Bible says he answered them like that. He said the Balak's whole storehouse of uh, treasure I won't come. Balak now sent the first group where, like local government chairman, he now sent governor's forum. Read your Bible, it's there. He said, more noble princes to come and beg this man of God. Please come and curse this nation for us. They are in danger. But this nation was Israel. Do you know what Balaam did again? As if between the day before and now, God has changed his mind. Some of you, you behave like that. You act like God changes his mind every day. Don't try God. See, if you do for one with God, he will teach you. Don't do it. Don't do it. The next time they came, which may have been a day or two later, the Bible says they didn't offer him 10 million. They said 100 million. Do you know what the man said? Let me go and ask God. Do you know what God said? God said, no. You're not afraid of God yet, have you? See, these are, you see how I am today. These are the things that damaged me. I was reading my Bible in 97, 98 that I made the mistake of reading my Bible alone. Not just the passage they mentioned in church. It damaged me. See me now. I'm totally damaged. Because God taught me his fear. He, I looked at my Bible. You know, you know the kind of thing you remember where you remove your glasses, you wipe your eye, you check well. well. After, because I had a problem with Ezekiel 14. Do you want to read a little of it? Let's read some Ezekiel 14. So you don't think it's my opinion. Listen, listen to this and tell me if you've ever heard anything so scary. Listen to God. Verse 4. Therefore speak to them and tell them. And he's talking about the men of Israel. He's talking about Christians. So don't say this is for unbelievers only. Therefore speak to them and tell them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their heart, what did they have in their heart? Do you know what an idol is? A substitute for God. When you have something that is competing with God in your life, in your heart, when you set it up in your heart and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and then go to a prophet. Do you hear? Do you check your heart? Your heart, it has competition with God. 
in front of your face is a stumbling block. You've put up something. This thing is a stumbling block. This thing is not correct. I love the guy is so handsome. He has broad shoulders, tall, baritone voice. I pity the girl. <laughs> Just pray he's not a boxer. Then he marries you, you will find out uh, there'll be deep voice and broad shoulders. You know they do anything for anybody or not. <laughs> you can be in hell from day two. It says, when you now go to a prophet, listen now, I, the Lord, will answer them myself in keeping with their great idolatry. Did you hear that? I'm still at that Ezekiel 14, verse 4. I will answer them how? In keeping with their idolatry. Now hear verse 7, repeating it. When any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing in Israel, do you see Israelites or foreigners residing in Israel? Those are people that go to church. Huh? Foreigner in Israel. <laughs> when they separate themselves from me, they are not joined to God. They are not close to God. They are separate like Ahab. They are not close to God. They are separated from God. They are not interested in God. And set up idols in their hearts. And put a wicked something block before their faces. And then go to a prophet to inquire of me. I the Lord will answer them myself. I will set my face against them. And make them an example and a byword. I will remove them from my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 9. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy, I the Lord have enticed that prophet and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear their guilt. The prophet will be as guilty as the one who consults him. Can you see why I almost fell off the bus? That God Almighty said that he deceives prophets, puts words in their mouth to deceive someone else. So he, he wiped both of them out. So when you hear, it's not every time you go and someone tells you, mm, I can see and tells you something that it has partial truth. When the advice that follows is contrary to scripture, run! Um, well, it's okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's okay. Um, um, yeah, you guys, you guys are not married. Yeah, you're living together. I can see you with a woman. I can see you with a woman. Yeah, you, you guys live together. You, you, you're not married. Yeah? Okay. All right. So what God is saying is that you people are going to end up marrying. You have two children. And yeah, okay. So give a prophet's offering. Excuse me. God forgot to say that we shouldn't live together again. He forgot. Um prophet it's okay for us to live together ah of course god calls things which are not as though they are <laughs> run oh. and you dare not drop any offering there bring that money here <laughs> come and take me out don't do that thing I'm, I'm not annoyed with your being deceived i'm annoyed with your wasting money that's the only part that is vexing me that's that money to a madman by the road because he here he is giving you a word and he doesn't have any fear of God because I, that he is deceived and was able to deceive you. God said, I myself, because you, you came, you know very well what the word of God says. You disregard it. You have a wicked stumbling block before your face, an idol in your heart, which is marriage for many people. You didn't know. You didn't know marriage is an idol for many people. Total idol. Just very big like this. It, there is one thing I can do in this world is to marry. If I can, if I can just marry, and you see some people going from church to church to church, wanting a prophecy that hits on that. And God is, you're separated from me, you're not close to me, but you have this thing you really want, and you're trying to use me to get what you really want. I see you. I'm going to deceive you. That's when God is showing you 4110. That's when God is saying, you think you're sharp, I'll show you I am sharper. How can you be sharp with the most high? So don't ever be sharp with God. Don't try it. He's sharper than anything you can comprehend. There's nothing he can't do. He, he knew your plan before you were born. C can you imagine fighting someone that knows everything before it occurs? 
So every move he would make, he already made all the moves in advance. He's think he's he's not two steps ahead of you. Do you get? He's he's millions, he's light years ahead of you. Oh, he knows. In his mercy, he allows us. He, you know, God is love. God love does not boast, so he doesn't put he doesn't rub it in your face. He allows you think you are actually coming up with ideas. He actually allows just to make you happy. But with God, everything is clear. Everything is obvious. 